Over 2,500 people with an average net worth over seven and a half million just revealed how they invest their money and the answer is gonna shock you. By the end of this video, you'll know the secret to how the rich invest, how you can get started and how much you'll make. We're talking how the rich invest to get rich today on Let's Talk Money. Be dead. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I wanna send a special shout out to everyone in the community Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click on that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. We've got a great video planned today. In fact, it could be one of the most important videos you watch on building wealth because I'm gonna show you how the rich actually do it. Now, when I say that, your first reaction is probably, it's another investing video, just another video on stock investing. But that's the single biggest myth in becoming rich, that it's about stocks. In fact, I'm gonna show you exactly where the rich put their money, and I'll tell you right now, very little of it is in stocks. We're gonna look at each investment they make, how you can use this knowledge, and how you can make these same investments. You know, a couple of years ago, Asset Managers, Scorpio Partners, and BNP Wealth Management reached out to over 2,500 of their wealthiest clients about where they put their money and how they're investing. These clients were from 17 different countries and had an average net worth of 7.6 million. That puts them in that top 1% in terms of wealth and about 100 times more than the average household. So this was a very special opportunity to see exactly where the rich are investing. We all know that the rich are getting richer, but this is how they're actually doing it. And like I said, the truth is gonna surprise you because it's not what you hear on TV or online. I'll show you the results next, but what they found is that the rich actually have less in stocks than they have in bonds or in cash. In fact, their money in stocks is more of an afterthought. It's a place to keep the money they don't know what to do with. It's this knowledge, what I'm gonna show you in this video that's gonna change the way you think about building wealth. I'm gonna reveal the true secret of the rich and how you can truly become wealthy. So let's look at those results. Remember, this is 2,500 people with an average wealth over seven and a half million dollars. Each row here is a percentage of their wealth they have in different assets, including their own business, stocks, bonds, cash, alternative investments, which is mostly real estate and investing in other startup companies. So the columns also give us a look at how the rich invest around the world. So we see the average, then it's broken down by how the rich invest in the US, in Europe, in China, and in the Middle East. Look at how much the rich have in stocks, that first average column, less than 20%. That's compared to 21% in bonds and over 25% invested in their own businesses. And this is really the secret of the rich. They're not sitting around watching CNBC. They're not trying to pick stocks that are gonna make them rich, hoping that management of those companies is gonna grow the stock price. The rich don't wait for someone else to make them rich. On the Forbes billionaires list, not one of them is there because they invested in stocks, zero. Every single one made their money by creating their own business or by investing in a startup of someone else's business. In this video, we're gonna go through each of those sources, how to get started and how much you can make with these millionaire money makers. But let's look at that survey again because there's a few points I wanna make before going through each source. First is that idea the rich have very little in stocks, actually more in bonds and cash. Why do you think that is? Why is 90% of what you hear about making money about stocks, but then we find out that the rich barely even use them? It's the idea of managing risk in your wealth, and this is a very important idea. This is something the rich pass down through their families while everyone else just throws their money at stocks. Between their own business and startup investments, the rich have more than a third of their money in risky investments. Anytime you're running your own company or investing in a new company, you're taking a lot of risk. That means you don't want the rest of your money in other risky investments like stocks. If the economy hits a rough patch, you might need cash to support your business. Stocks aren't gonna help you. We hit a recession and stocks are just gonna crash. So the rich park their non-business money in bonds and cash for that rainy day. That 40% the average rich person said they had in bonds and cash, that's over $3 million for the people in this survey. Now that three million might only be earning three or 4% a year in bonds. So why are they sacrificing the ability to make maybe eight or 12% in stocks with that money? It's because they know as long as they can ride out those rough times in their own business, they'll make 30, 40% or more every single year. The rich make themselves rich. We also see that there's some differences in how the rich invest across the world. Uh, the wealthy in the US have much more in stocks, but still the majority of their money in their own businesses and in startup investing. The reason for these differences is mostly due to how well the stock market works and faith in institutions in the US versus other regions. Uh, but that overall idea is still the same, even for the rich in America. So now let's look at each source from the table below, how you can get started and how much you can make.
The most important one here is creating your own business, but I don't want to call it that. I think a lot of people get scared talking about creating a business like they need to create something like the next Amazon or Google. This can be something as simple as freelancing online, starting with just a few hours a week doing projects for other people. You can put up a basic website in less than 15 minutes. We'll look at a few ideas for businesses and, and you can be making money in less than a week. Once you've started, once you've got that asset that's going to be generating cash flow, that's going to be creating wealth forever. And that's a powerful idea. That means you've got something working for you instead of always having to work for someone else. Now I've got a few videos planned specifically for different business ideas and how to get started in each. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. I'm going to be going step by step into different ideas and business strategies you can use that don't require a start lot of startup money or experience. There are literally hundreds of small business ideas you can run with and most can be managed in less than five hours a week. We'll be talking through some of these in that upcoming video, but I want you to really think about what you like to do. What do you do as a hobby and how can you turn that into a little extra cash every month? It's another secret of the rich and something you don't see in investments that they've found a way to make money doing what they enjoy. It might take a few hours a week starting your business, growing your business, but it's something you're going to enjoy. You're going to have control over your financial future and you'll love the work. I'm going to change that quote by Steve Jobs a little bit to the only way to be truly successful and happy is to love what you do. Listen to what you love doing and find a way to make money doing that. Now stocks may be a small part of how the rich invest, but it's still something you need in your wealth building plan. Besides a steady return and great cash flow from dividends, stocks are just a good source of passive income versus that 24 seven work that sometimes goes into building your own business. Now we've got a lot of stock investing videos here on the channel, but I want to talk about one very important idea here, something that most investors miss and it's going to make you a better stock investor. The how you invest is much more important than the what. You see, investors spend all their time trying to pick stocks, watching CNBC or following their favorite investing blog. What happens is they end up trading in and out of stocks. They miss those big long-term returns and they just lose thousands to commissions. Because of this, the average investor earns just 4% a year. That's 4% versus the long-term return on stocks of 8% and even a 5% return on bonds. Instead of the what, those stocks that you pick, I want to share with you my favorite investing strategy. Now this is the how of investing that's going to boost your returns, save you thousands in fees and really just give you a stress-free way to make your money work for you. The strategy is called core satellite. Now the core satellite strategy means putting the majority of your portfolio, maybe 60 or 70% in broad exchange traded funds. These funds invest in hundreds of individual stocks within a theme or a sector. So for example, if you have the Vanguard real estate fund, that's ticker VNQ, which invests in companies that own commercial properties. Another example would be the technology select sector spider. That's ticker XLK. The fund holds shares in 76 of the biggest tech names like Apple, Facebook, and Google. It pays a 1.3% dividend yield and has returned over 14% a year over the last decade. So you build out the core part of your portfolio around these funds that give you instant diversification. You don't have to worry about any single company crashing and destroying your portfolio, but you get solid returns from the group. Then you take the rest of your money, that 30 or 40% and you put that in individual stocks. Pick that top 10 stocks that you really believe in. By limiting your stock picks to just a handful, you're only able to invest in the very best, the ones with the most potential. Since the individual stock part of your portfolio is only 30% or so of your money, none of these individual stocks are really going to be more than a, somewhere between 3 to 5%. That means none are going to drag your portfolio down too much if they don't work out, but they still give you that extra upside potential, that extra potential for upside returns. So check out some of those other investing videos on the channel, but keep that core satellite strategy in mind. Think about those broad funds you want for that overall market exposure and then adding just a few individual stocks for those higher returns. Now bonds are the most underrated investment for most investors. They pay reliable cash returns and offer the ultimate protection in a stock market crash, but investors give them no love at all. Well, regular investors anyway, because you see from that survey that the rich actually put a fifth of their money in fixed income. That's a big chunk of money and those bonds take a lot of risk out of the portfolio. When stocks crash, the rich can use those bonds to snap up shares on the cheap when everyone else is running to the exits. The regular cash payments from the bonds, that coupon payment twice a year, can also be used to support cash needs for the business even when times are tough. 
Now, the great thing about bonds is that they're so easy to invest in, even easier than stocks. That's because unless you have a hundred grand or more to invest, your best bet is just to buy a few funds that hold types of bonds. Buying individual bonds can get really expensive, but these funds completely diversify your fixed income portfolio and are going to give you all the exposure you need. Now I'm going to cover two bond funds I use in my own portfolio, two funds that are going to give you the safety of bonds with some solid returns. I'm also going to share a link in the video description to a bond investing video here on the channel. It goes into more detail on returns you can expect and the different types of bonds. So be sure to look for that link in the video description below. First here is the iShares Core US Aggregate Bond ETF. That's ticker AGG. Now this is probably one of the safest and most diverse bond funds with two thirds of its holdings in government or government agency debt, but it still has some corporate bonds to increase that interest rate. Now you see that the fund has taken a hit since late 2017 because of those rising interest rates, but that just means the yields have gone up. You're getting an interest rate of almost 2.9% on super safe collections of bonds here. The next bond fund I like is the iShares High Yield Corporate Bond ETF. That's ticker HYG. Now this is a group of almost a thousand of those bonds from companies with less than perfect credit, but guess what? It's still a very safe investment. With the investment spread across a thousand companies, even with the 2008 crash, the fund has returned more than 6% annually over the last decade. Now there are hundreds of bond funds and you can get into things like international debt, emerging markets, and some other interesting choices. But these two funds are what I use for most of my investment. Now cash isn't an investment. Even cash in money market accounts and, and short term treasury bonds only pays around 2% a year. That's basically just keeping the value of your money after inflation. So why do the rich hold nearly a fifth of their money in cash? And here we get back to that idea of risk in your overall wealth and how to balance that out. The rich have a huge amount of risk in their own businesses and in those startup investments. They can afford to let some of their wealth sit there making 2% because they're doubling that 25% of their wealth every year by growing their business. When times get tough with when a recession hits, they know they have the cash to pay the bills and support their business to survive until the good times return. Now I'm not saying you need to have 20% of your money in cash, especially if your business doesn't require a lot of expenses. Say you're managing websites or you have a YouTube channel, then it's not about having the cash, but just the time to make those things work. But here I think a, the old rule of thumb over having three to six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund is a good idea. That means not only living expenses, but also cash to support your business as well. If it comes to that, that might mean only 5% of your wealth. It might mean 15%, but don't neglect holding something in cash to lower that risk in the rest of your portfolio. So alternative investments aren't a big part of how the rich invest between five and 10%, but they are an important part. When, when I say alternative investments, we mean things like real estate, hedge funds, and private equity. Now they're called alternative because it's a different set of factors compared to stocks. Alternative investments might not be as easy to buy or sell as stocks. They'll have higher fees and might lock your money up for a few years before you can sell them. That said, every investor should have some real estate exposure. Owning real properties is going to protect your money from inflation. It's going to generate stable cash flows and it's also going to protect your portfolio when stocks crash. I started my professional career as a real estate analyst just out of the Marine Corps and have held rental properties over the last 20 years. So real estate's always held a special place in my portfolio. The big problem here is that a lot of investors though, is that those huge down payments you need to buy property that upfront cost can easily stretch into the hundreds of thousands. That's why I've put together a video on the seven strategies I've used to invest in real estate with no money down, no down payment, no credit necessary, seven ways to get started in property that don't require that huge upfront investment. Now the video is going to go into my experience in each strategy, how to get started and how much you can make. So look for that link in the video description below. Finally, here is startup investing and the rich invest here about in the same amount as they do alternative investments. So between five and 10% of their total wealth, this is investing in startup businesses before the rest of the market, before they have stock available. I'm excited about this one because something just changed in the last years that opens up this investment to millions of investors like never before. You see, before the jobs act, you had to have over a million dollars net worth or make over 200 grand a year before you could invest in these new companies. They, they raised money through angel investor groups or venture capital, but only the rich could invest. 
That's all changed now with equity crowdfunding. It's a huge opportunity for Main Street investors. Research by Willamette University on more than 1,200 early stage investments over 15 years showed an average return of 160% over any four year period. That's a 27% annual return. That's almost triple the average annual return on stocks and six times over what you'll earn on bonds. Now, investing in startup companies is a lot like combining stock investing with building out your own business. You'll look at this business like a stock, analyzing the management and financials, but you'll also look at it in terms of business potential. You'll also put on your business hat to look at the management's plan for the future and how they plan on building out their business. Investing in these startups is easy through crowdfunding sites like EquityNet, CircleUp, and WeFunder. These sites act like the broker with early stage companies posting them on the platform for investors to review. Knowing about these six types of investments the rich use to grow their wealth, the next thing to do is to decide how much of your money to put in each. I'm not going to say to follow the percentages we see in the survey. In fact, these are only averages, so even the rich invest a little different depending on their own personal needs. The most important thing I want you to get from this is that stocks aren't going to make you rich. If you want that financial freedom, you have to make yourself wealthy through building a business that's going to produce cash flow. But the best part about the internet revolution is that starting your own business doesn't require that huge upfront costs or continuous expenses like in the past. You can run your own business online on a budget of nothing, just the time you spend. Even in something like Amazon FBA, you might only have a few thousands on inventory costs and marketing each month, so nothing compared to all the costs in traditional businesses. That's going to affect how much you have in these different types of investments, but it's not going to change that idea. You might not need quite as much in cash or bonds because your monthly expenses aren't going to be that high, but you still have that business risk that you need to manage with less money in stocks. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, subscribe and just scroll down and ask it in the comments and we'll answer it in a future video.